Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of the Optimized Muslim podcast. I do intend to upload this as a podcast and also a YouTube video as well, but I'm just trying out a different format using a screen capture app. I posted recently a book review on Heart's Turn by Michael Sujik, I think that's how you pronounce it. And obviously, if you are just listening to the podcast, it might be helpful to watch the YouTube video version of this um, because you're going to actually see me flicking through pages of the book and also some notes that I've made, but I will try my best to make it um, listenable. So here's the cover. It's called Heart's Turn, Sinners, Seekers, Saints and the Road to Redemption. Now, the reason I mentioned it in my previous video titled The Psychology Behind Praying Salah Five Times a Day was because I think one of the obstacles that people face is that they feel that they're lacking momentum and they're at a certain stage in their life where they think that the dean is out of reach and there's no hope for them. So I recommended this book as a book that can help you rebuild that momentum. It shows you that forgiveness is possible and there is hope and seeking forgiveness is key. And that's the reason why I recommend this, recommended this book. And I've also heard from other people of how beneficial it is. I think it was published in March of 2019, if I'm correct. And it's also available on the Kindle version, which is, which is very helpful. I like to get my books on Kindle so I don't have to carry around books. Obviously, a lot of these Islamic books out there, they're not on Kindle version, but more are going towards that way. So aside from that, I'm just going to go over to my notes app. Um, you can see the cover is very nicely designed. I'm sure the physical paper copy is also nice. I know some people just like the physical feel of a book that they have. And I'm just going to go over to the notes app and just go over the key benefits that I think you can get from reading this book. And because obviously this project is, ta is targeted towards practical benefits. And we're not just interested in reading something for the sake of it. So on this in this book by reading it you realize seeking forgiveness is key there is hope for everyone it gets you out of that rut of negativity feeling defeated feeling like there's no hope which i think a lot of people go through and it uses stories which appeal to our emotions and helps the message resonate i think we, if a certain story connects with us then it's something that we won't forget and obviously this book is filled with these kinds of stories so any one of them, if they stick with you, then you can constantly go back to that whenever you're in a situation whereby you need that reminder. And also, it uses examples from throughout history and also contemporary times as well. That means that sometimes people use the excuse that, oh, those times were different, those people were different. That doesn't apply to me. Everyone has these kind of rationalizing excuses that they tell themselves, and this helps to get rid of that because... There's also examples from modern times, from different walks of life, different countries, different ethnicities, um, people who committed different crimes before they repented and before their lives were changed and before they became great worshippers. And the main goal here is that you use this as kind of a psychological booster that gives you the impetus to get back into taking action and building momentum and doing your deeds and getting back into that zone where you feel like your iman is on a high and you're able to maintain that. This, I would say, isn't just for the lovey-dovey forgiveness stories as a form of just entertainment with no action. Make sure that you fully utilize the benefits of this book by taking action. So now I'm going to go back to the book and just go through some of the contents and maybe read a couple of the examples. I'll only be able to read some of the short ones. Um, I, I think I'll read two. Also, a side note, the if the audio isn't that great, it will be improving in the future, inshallah, because I'm looking to get an external microphone. Um, which I did have, but it stopped working for some reason. So I'll see how this goes. So I'm just going to go through the... If you look at the contents, you can see there's an introduction, and then each chapter is titled. They're all relatively short. Some are shorter than others. Some are maybe two or three pages, and then some are five or six or longer. And there's all these different titles for the stories mentioned in there. And I feel like that's another benefit of a Kindle version. You can kind of flick through and just go to whichever one speaks to you. So I'm going to read, I think, a story called Well Past High Time. And this is the one that I referenced in my Instagram review because it's to do with Al Fudail Ibn Iyad. And this was probably one of the most this was probably one of the most um, powerful stories for me. So I'm just going to read through it and I hope you can benefit. And obviously I'm reading through this hoping that you do invest and get the book. This is just a taste, obviously, and there's, I think, probably dozens more of these kinds of stories in here. Al-Fudail ibn Iyad al-Talaqani was a dangerous criminal. He led a gang of ruthless highwaymen on the road between Merv and Bavar during the late 8th century, 2nd century of Hijra. 
The gang beset caravans and hapless travellers, robbed them, beat them and sometimes even killed them. Al-Fudayl Al -Fudayl masqueraded as a dervish, wearing sackcloth, a woollen cap and a rosary, tasbih, around his neck. But pious disguise notwithstanding, he was a hardened scoundrel who ruled his gang with an iron fist, keeping inventory and dividing the loot. Yet he had within him the seeds of piety. He was, by nature, dignified and possessed a sense of chivalry. He refused to rob women or penurious travellers, and he would always leave his victims with a portion of their belongings to carry on with their travels. He had a romantic streak, and it was said was madly in love with a woman to whom he gave his share of the swag. al Fudel's gang caught wind of an approaching caravan and readied themselves to attack. A traveller with the caravan carrying a bag of gold had been forewarned of al Fudel's highwaymen, and when the caravan approached this treacherous stretch of road he took off to find a place to hide his cash he came upon a tent and entered to find an ascetic dervish he asked the dervish if he could leave his bag for safekeeping with him the ascetic instructed him to place the bag in one corner of the tent which he did the traveller returned to the caravan to find that he had been attacked and robbed by bandits who left the travellers fettered hand and foot he loosened their restraints and then and the ransacked caravan moved on the traveller stayed behind to retrieve his bag of gold, but when he approached the ascetic's tent, he saw the dervish among the bandits, squatting in a circle and dividing plunder. Ah, I've left my gold to a, thought, I've left my gold to a thief, he thought to himself, and made to slip away, but al Fudel caught sight of him and called him over. He approached the band of highwaymen fearfully. What do you want from me, he asked. Take your bag from where you left it in my tent, said al Fudel. Remember, al Fudel is the highway criminal here. With a mixture of relief and bewilderment, the traveller retrieved his bag and took to the road to catch up with the caravan. al Fudel's gang was outraged. How could you let him leave? The entire caravan didn't yield even one dirham in cash and you let him leave with a bag of gold. al Fudel replied, this man had a good opinion of me and I have always had a good opinion of God and the hopes that he will one day accept my repentant, repentance. I justified the traveller's good, op good opinion of me so that God might justify my good opinion of him. The following day the gang attacked another caravan. After the event, a traveller from the caravan approached the circle of bandits who were taking their lunch. Who is your leader? he asked the group. He is on the other side of that tree by the river bank. He is praying. The traveller was confused. But, isn't, but it isn't the time for prayer. He is performing supererogatory prayers, he was told. Why is he not eating with you? asked the traveller. He is fasting. But it isn't Ramadan, it isn't Ramadan said the traveller. He is performing the supererogatory fast, said the thieves. And the flabbergasted traveller approached al Fudel, who was praying with great concentration. When the bandit had finished his prayers, the traveller addressed him. How can you fast and pray, and at the same time rob and murder Muslims? al Fudel turned to him and asked, Do you know the Qur'an? The traveller replied in the affirmative. Well then, does not God, who is exalted, say, and others have confessed their sins, they have mixed the righteous deed with another evil? This left the traveller dumbfounded. His life continued in this strange dissociative way, mixing crime with piety, until one night he was atop a wall, on the lookout for more plunder. A caravan passed and Al-Fudel heard the traveller reciting from the Qur'an. Is it not time that the hearts of those who believe should be humbled to the remembrance of God? Al-Fudel was thunderstruck, his heart pierced to the core, and he cried out, It is high time indeed. Nay, it is well past high time. And with that, Al-Fudel fled in shame to a ruin. There he found an encampment of travellers who assumed he had come to rob them. They made to flee, but one from the group said, We can't leave, al Fudel is on the road. Good news, cried al Fudel. he has repented. al Fudel tracked down every one of his victims, restored the wealth he had stolen and sought their forgiveness. For thirty years, no one ever saw him smile except on the day when his son died. Only then did he smile. When he was asked by a disciple why he smiled, he replied, I realised that God was pleased that my son should die, and I smiled to accord with God's pleasure. He became one of the greatest saints of his age. May God be well pleased with him and may we, ins may we be inspired by his repentance. Now this is, I think, uh, a poem by al Fudel ibn Iyad. My Lord, have mercy, for you know my repentance, and do not punish me, for you have power over me. O God, you keep me hungry, and you keep my children hungry. You keep me naked, and you keep my children naked. You do, you do this to your friends. By what spiritual station has al Fudel earned this great blessing from you? So I think that's all I'm going to read from the book. But as you can see, there's many more different stories from many different periods. And I would recommend that you all buy this book and you definitely take benefit from it. And when you are going through a down period in your Iman, you use this as a way of regaining that momentum. And yeah, so I'm just going to end it here. Inshallah, I'll be uploading this as an Instagram Instagram TV episode and YouTube episode and also a podcast episode. I will request that if you benefit, then if you can like and share the content and review the podcast on whichever platform you use. And most importantly, make dua that we are all sincere in our efforts and make dua that we all are kept and guided towards a straight path. Uh, Assalamu alaikum.